Hi, this is Pepper. With so much going on in the world, in events, in our lives, I thought this would be a really good time for us to spend a little time together. So I'm recording this first video in a series for you now. There will be others and other opportunities for us to come together as well. The next newsletter will be out soon, so I hope you're a subscriber to that. And I have some online um, meeting room chats set up for us as well. And I'll get to those a little bit later as well. And those will be opportunities for questions and answers and for us to explore together some of the uh, events of the world and perhaps in our personal life as well. So um, this is the first video. And uh, I know you're hearing everything you can possibly take in regarding um, life circumstances uh, as related to our health, as related to employment and financial news and everything else we can possibly stand. So I'd like to look at things from a slightly different perspective today and, um, and we'll see where that goes um, as well. If you're tuning in for the first time, you can listen to other videos that are posted here or on my YouTube channel and um, see if they work for you. Um, so we're kind of looking at things right now from a very broad standpoint, meaning all of the news, the media, everything that we can see around the world. And then we're also looking at things from a very narrow standpoint, meaning our life. Where am I today? Where am I today with everything that's going on in my day, in my home, in whatever way that um, experience or confinement looks for you um, right now? And we're all a little bit different on the spectrum about that. But there's a lot of things that are happening in between that spectrum. And that's where I am concentrating my energies at looking at things. See if I can look at things a little bit um, differently. See what's new or what's different or what, what happened. What happened in the world? We have explanations for them. We have explanations that describe viruses and that describe how things are transmitted from animal to human. And, uh, and there's a lot of other theories going around as well. Maybe you're someone that explores them. Um, I think we'll do that in a future video as well. I know I've had some requests for that as well. So we're kind of in the midst of a storm right now. And it's affecting all of us a little bit differently. A lot of strange and mysterious things are happening. Um, some that are predictable and some that are not. So, um, you know, in some ways, some of this could have been predicted and maybe was. Uh, we've all seen some of those great sci-fi movies that are apocalyptic themed in some way. And they describe events like this in some way, but of course it's different. We're watching a movie and we go home thinking about whether it was a, a good or a bad movie or whether things like that could really happen. And then all of a sudden we're in the midst of it ourselves. And I think that takes us um, all a bit by surprise because we don't think that these things will happen now or happen to us or in our lifetime, but they do. They do. And this is the time period that um, for these kinds of things. And there will be others as well, different, different in their own way. And this one will yet come and go in a few different ways, different iterations, different inventions of itself before it's finally gone as well. So hopefully we can talk about those things as well. Um, one of the things that's interesting to me is that in my, um, in my visions of the near future, which I have had off and on since I was a child, this scenario that we're in right now, it, it existed. It already existed. But it wasn't, in a, it wasn't in this timeline. It wasn't now. It wasn't yet. And those are the kind of things that kind of surprise me a little bit. It almost seems like things are unfolding out of sequence. Um, out of sequence as if timelines 
have been crossed and uh, or accelerated because things are happening sooner than what um, what I thought. So I am allowing that look at timelines to kind of guide my experience um, of looking at what's happening and seeing what's next. Um, seeing if I can figure out what's supposed to happen next because it didn't really go that way. And because visioning is just part of what I do. And we, it keeps me out of trouble. It keeps me out of fear. And uh, it, it is something that is like investigative journalism, but using other resources as well. So I would like to encourage you to do the same, to start to use, to train or retrain some of your inner resources, to mobilize some of these abilities that we all have because we have need of them right now. Um, we put them off. We thought some people have them, some people don't. Um, you know, we'll trust our instincts or our intuition. But sometimes when things like this happen, we don't know exactly what to trust or who to trust. And our natural defenses come up instead. Those old fight or flight, or in this case, freeze or isolate or some of those things. And there may be resources that we can count on and trust that are more available to us at this time but we have to call upon them again. And in some cases, they're down a little bit further deep than, um, than we would like them to be. And we have come to trust a little bit too much the outer resources, the media, for instance, which isn't really even a human resource, but we have come to think of it that way because we're so dependent upon technology at this time, maybe especially now because it's a way to look out at the world or touch the world in ways that we can't do physically right now. But we do have inner resources, other inner sensibilities. So for all of our outer resources or outer senses like touch, there are inner resources that begin with feeling and go a lot more deeper than that. So for every outer sense that we have, there is an inner sense close, close to the edge that matches it and then as you go deeper, that same sense becomes something else and becomes enriched and becomes fuller and becomes more accessible, almost like a string of, of beads. You can pull it up and the whole string comes up. But we have to learn about it again or retrain ourselves. So I want to encourage you to do that. It seems like we all have a little bit of extra spare time um, that we can use for that right now if we if we choose to time spent at home or in quieter places and we can do that so um, one of the ways to do that as well is to um, to use scent for instance so our sense of smell is an outer scent and so we can use scent as a transmission as a way to move from one outer sense to an inner sense. So something as simple as lavender or eucalyptus or orange, things like that, those scents will take us, expand the capacity of our lungs, make that connection between outer and inner organs, sensibilities, and so the two begin to work together, outer and inner. So that's a good way to begin. So in every video, I'll try and give you something constructive to do as well. So we're not necessarily looking for psychic abilities or clairvoyance or anything that you think may be harder to access. Right now, we're just looking to link the outer and the inner together, have them not be so separate. Not here I'm, I am awake and there I am asleep. We're looking to link these together with a kind of consciousness or um, awareness that will help us at this time. And I think if you do that, you will probably notice the beginning um, of a change. You will also notice, because our inner resources are unique, that they are not as conditioned to, to fear 
they are not as conditioned to agreement in this collective reality, this thing that we've kind of all fallen into um, together, where, um, where the words self-isolation and quarantine and all these new buzzwords that were really not part of our vocabulary and all of a sudden are. So when we find ourselves saying and doing that a lot, we have fallen into a collective reality. And so there's less of our individualness, our uniqueness shining through and we are um, occupying a space that is much more conditioned reality, like air conditioned space is a conditioned space. Well, when we are only agreeing to another reality, a moment of reality, then we are also in some way being conditioned. So um, to go on and to keep things kind of simple, in a simple mode here, if I place a few characteristics, I would say we have modes that are human and other than human and more than human. So we'll just keep that to those three categories right now. So human, we could say is our everyday element. I'm being very human, this is my routine, this is what I do, this is how I greet people. And all of those things are just our human element, baseline, we'll just call that human baseline. When we say other than human, maybe we could say that kind of special intelligence that we know that the animal kingdom has for itself, when it's a predator, when it senses a predator, it's a kind of an instinct slash intelligence, and we'll call that other than human. And we have the ability to tap into that as well, those little spider senses or whatever you'd want to call them. And then if we say more than human, then we're reaching into that realm of more than intuition, that connectivity that we have, that knowingness, awareness, awakeness. And even though it's just human, it also feels a little bit more than human. We feel a little bit more on top of things, a little bit more creative, a little bit more aligned, um, and a little bit more even, even balanced. So there's things that are notable about that. So also take note of that. Look into your life and your reality right now. Notice when you're being very human. Notice when it feels like other than human. Notice when it feels more than human. And notice that about your family and friends as well. It's not a time to tell people, you know, you shouldn't do it that way, or you know you can do it this other way instead. And that's not what I am suggesting. I am just suggesting that you notice. We're going to be very watchful as much as we can right now, awake um, and aware. Because the more that we notice that, the more we will learn to trust these instincts that are ours to call upon. These are tools like any other tools. They are resources. <laughs> They're not toilet paper, but they are great and important um, resources. So back to our current situation here. Um, I said earlier that it looked like things have, things are appearing out of sequence or in a different timeline sense. So I wanna go back to that and explain a little bit about what I mean about that. So if you think about this a little bit like a train that has jumped its tracks, but has landed on another track, another platform, and, and it's accelerating, and it's going into a curve, so then things begin to look dangerous. And so that's what I mean about a little bit of the shift in timeline. Things just went like from zero to 100. They jumped a timeline. And usually there are sequences, there are hints, there are, um, there are things that you can tell when things, when things happen. And this time it didn't go that way. So what I mean is that 
we are in a completely different sequence that makes it different to uh, difficult to predict, to, um, to align with. And so we're kind of in between that, but we are a passenger on that train that is now on a different platform and is accelerating and heading for this curve. So what does that mean? What can happen? Well, using that same example of the train, it could be anything really. So it kind of depends on who's driving the train. Are they experienced? How tight? How is that curve that we're coming into? You know, how will we come out of that? So those are things that we are going to be looking at in these next few videos and chats um, as well. So we have moved into a different space very quickly, a different sequence of time and how things are aligned. And those are things that are of particular interest to me more than um, how quickly we can stomp down this thing, which we will. Um, um, but there are other factors at work here. And because I like to look at that, I'm hoping that you may be interested in it as well. So the first thing, again, we're talking about in this video, just noticing, just watching things as they appear, as they show up in life. And so look to see, are the things that are showing up in sequence or out of sequence in what would somehow make sense to you. Just notice for right now. Uh, notice people and places and things as they show up. Because if they appear to be out of sequence, out of sync, out of their timeline, either we have to adjust ourselves or perhaps we can adjust or shift some of these things that just show up just appear so that we feel a little bit more in command of our life. I think we can see and all agree that right now we are not in control of nature, nor should we be. But if we ever needed a confirmation of that, we have it, um, we have it here. So in noticing when things are out of sequence or timeline, what does that look like? How would you do that? So if I give you a simple example, like for instance, there are weeks where for whatever reason, your Thursday feels like a Friday, your Sunday feels like a Monday. And so things just think that's weird. You just notice it, that it's, that it's different. Um, deja vu moments feel different. They momentarily take you out of sequence or out of your day or your normal time way of doing things. So those are really simple examples, but there are things that are showing up right now that definitely seem to be out of sequence and are affecting us in a very big way and will continue to do so. I don't want to go into big detail about it yet. I'm not sure that I have all the details yet, but I do think it would be helpful if you begin to um, notice things and see if they have an explanation or maybe they don't. We're in a new realm of possibilities now instead of probabilities. And probably more than ever, we are looking at data, we're looking at numbers, we're looking at projections. And so we're really into the mental cognitive state of this. And if at all possible, I would like us to also be in a more sensitive, heart-based um, place with this and to the degree that we can be, I think we are. I'll write a little bit more about that in an article that's coming out in the next newsletter. So if you're not subscribed to the newsletter, you may want to be. Um, I also want to maybe suggest that you kind of look for or expect the unexpected, and I'm not saying negative things here. This is a difficult situation as it is. So just look for things that are unexpected, unexpected news, unexpected discoveries about yourself, maybe. Um, anything that we would like to um, shift or change, we have opportunities to do that as well. But we're going to have to look for them. We're going to have to look for when 
to insert them into this different reality. I don't want to say new reality, but into this different reality, um, whatever that means. I don't want to call it a new normal. I think it's too soon for that. And honestly, based on everything that I'm seeing right now, I don't think that we're going to know um, normal or a new normal. I think we're going to a different. So that's another reason to come to explore some of these other faculties that are really um, ours to have. So going back to that timeline again. So when I said that I sort of saw this or sort of expected it, but not now, not yet. So in my visions, if I were to assign a time period or year to this, in my visions, it looked like this type of scenario. And it wasn't even a worldwide one. It was around 2033 to 2035. Um, and here we are. Here we are. So what I saw for this time period was a little bit of an acceleration of what we've been seeing, more earth changes. I had expected to see more challenging earthquakes than what we have really. Uh, we've had a few volcanic eruptions. I expected to see more by now. And a few other strange anomalies like, like separations of um, land masses, something that feels a little bit more liquid than solid, something that looks a little bit more than the shifting, um, something more that we notice anomalies around the polar regions, that even though there have been some, they have not been to the extent that I imagined that they would be in this um, time period. So that may be to come, maybe we'll come back to that track of time and things will look that way but it's obvious that right now we're dealing with something else so i'm trying to adjust to that now just as you are and to be um, curious about it creative about it informed about it and um, and to remain friendly with what's happening right now in other words not to make all of these experiences my adversaries not to make a virus an enemy. Of course, no one wants to get ill, but trying not to make people or countries or um, neighbors or people of different opinions, not to make these adversaries, but to make all of this my contemporaries, my companions, and what I'm sharing the earth reality with right now. So see if that makes any sense for you to do that as well. It may or um, may not. Um, in future videos, I'll try to address some of the questions that you're sending me. I think some of them are great. And maybe we'll do one where we just explore some of that as well. If you are, um, if you're spiritually minded, and you don't have to be, but if you are, and you're someone who has taken a lot of seminars, read a lot of books, um, followed many teachers, you may recall that these are the times that we have trained for, like athletes in some ways. Uh, we may have thought that it was going to be easier, that it was going to be different, that because we um, had dedicated ourselves to good work or being good people, that either we deserve for things to be different or that things would be pre-selected for us, in an easier format, and I think we've all seen that it doesn't work that way. So we are on this Earth ship together, and we are moving in a certain direction that we are going to continue to explore together. So these are the moments where we want to be compassionate, where we want to um, be peaceful, if at all possible, where, um, <laughs> where we want to have, have patience. Earlier today, I, I was thinking um, that sometimes when we are young parents, that we learn patience. So when our children become teenagers, we'll be able to use that patience. 
But then I discovered that was a really poor example. So I don't want you to use that one. I think you can think of better examples than that one. But it's good to have some humor about this as well. And I know that we are all doing that with the hundreds or thousands of memes that are quickly circulating around, um, around the planet. So, um, okay, so my recording's acting up a little bit. Hopefully everything will be okay. Um, I think that the last thing I wanna say just to, um, just to end this and put things in a, in a good perspective, it's kind of a, a strange way of doing it, um, but I think I will anyway. So when I look at some of the other statistics, and I know that a lot of us have kind of been looking at previous flus and epidemics, such as um, the Spanish flu of 1918, but you know, I thought further back than that today. So I thought about the time of Christopher Columbus and some of his people, some of those countries moving into some of the indigenous areas. And when that happened, just based on them being Europeans and living in a certain way, they brought everything from smallpox to other influenzas to all of these indigenous people, wiping out about 90% of indigenous peoples in that part of the world, which amounted to about 55 million people. So those pathogens were smallpox and measles and a few different kinds of influenzas known to city dwellers um, in Europe at the time. When, uh, when the Spanish conquered the Aztecs, aside from all the wars and everything and the battles and the weapons that they brought, again, smallpox decimated about 3 million Aztecs. So we carry these things in us and we carry these things, whether we're aware of them or not, around the planet. And we don't always know what we're doing or how not to do that or how it will affect huge numbers of um, people. The same thing happened in the 16th century with, um, with the Maya, for example, as well. And in that case, it was a kind of a, uh, a fever that led to different kinds of hemorrhaging as well. And um, that wiped out, I don't know how many people, a huge amount of the population again. So these things happen and they happen periodically and we could think about as well whether they are um, natural occurrences or man-made ones. There are great cases for, uh, for both of those scenarios and I think we'll do that in a future video as well. So um, look for more from me. I love that many of you are communicating with me. Thanks for the private messages. Thanks for everything that you post. Thanks for the funny memes. I think they're great as well. And I'll be in touch again very soon. Bye for now.